In this video, we're going to focus on the last section of the lab report, which is basically conclusion evaluation. Knowing that conclusion has six points and evaluation has another six points. But I'm putting them together because they're very much closely related to each other. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. When it comes to conclusion, you have to be very careful here that it's you have to restate your hypothesis. So I will start the beginning of your conclusion by just mention again your hypothesis. And by the end of that statement, where it says, if this, then this, and then you say right after it that it's been supported or not supported. Do not say the word proved, because proved will get your points off. It's just about being supported or not supported. Now, once you mention your hypothesis and you mention right after it if it's been supported or not supported, then it comes with the backup information. What are the backup? The backup is talking about your raw data, your process data, your statistical data, your graphic analysis data. So all of these data are going there. So you're just comparing between your different independent variables, what, what the results are. You can usually go straight to just talking about the average of one certain thing, like say different temperatures. The temperatures at 30, these were the this was the average, and the temperature for it was the average. You can see that there is an increasing trend or there's a decreasing trend. You can see there was a positive correlation or a negative correlation. Then you talk about the statistical analysis. Whatever it is, for example, if a standard deviation, you can see the standard deviation value was very low, which that means that the, pro that the data was very collected, the procedure was very done, and you can see that most of the results were so close to each other, which proves that, again, supports, again, the hypothesis. Or you can say the standard deviation number was really big, and which means that the procedure was not well conducted, and which that means the data was very much spread, and that means there come some kind of doubts in there, so it cannot be fully supported. And then... You can talk about your graph again, which is the same information that you put on your graph. You put it back again, talking about if it was statistically different or not, if the data showed a positive, negative trend, the correlations, any of this stuff. That's what your backup is. Because you can't just say that your hypothesis was supported or not. You have to mention all these data right after it. So remember to mention, whenever you're talking about those numbers, mention the numbers and the uncertainty right next to it. So it'd be something like this, 45 plus or minus one gram. Make sure that you're writing that on your text. Little communication details like these can be very, very important. So right after that, because that will be your first paragraph, sometimes it might take you two paragraphs to describe the entire data, right? On your third paragraph, third or fourth, usually, usually the third one, you'll be talking about some scientific article that can support your research. That means that scientific article must be cited. What do you need to know about the scientific article, which is extremely important, is that a lot of students don't put it. They just talk about their data, their lab report, and they're done. No. Once you have done your hypothesis, once you have the backup, all the data with it, the next paragraph, you need to find a scientific article done by another scientist who has done an experiment related to yours that will support or will not support your situation. Most likely, the, most of the time, will be support. You put it there to back up another idea from your hypothesis. You have to cite it. Now, here's the most important thing is that the paragraphs, they, they cannot be too small. I have seen students only put in one tiny paragraph and that was it. No. Conclusion needs to be really big. And we're talking big as in three paragraphs minimum. Does it have to be eight? No, that's too much. So usually the first one, hypothesis with data. Second one is mostly more data, average standard deviation graphs. The third one, that's where you talk about the scientific article. Make sure it's a scientific article that is related to your lab. Don't give something that has nonsense. And when you get it, make sure that it's cited. And I, like I said here, about two to three longs. Again, talk about the trends and relationships. Also, something that you can talk about is the inconsistency of the data or the outliers. You can mention about the outliers here. You don't get points if the outliers are shown. You can talk about the outliers and say why you rejected them or why they don't support the situation. That also is point because you're mentioning about them. Now, here's an example of how a conclusion will look like, right? It says, in conclusion, uh, through the data gathered, whatever the magnesium chloride concentration as low as 0.04 moles increase the growth of the rate of Mosaic basilicus plants. Look how he continues putting italic. The data collection this research supports, and you can see right there, after you mention it, the hypothesis, it says about the support. Supports this, and then you can see as this guy was increasing, the other one also did increase. That's his hypothesis. 
The over here says the data supports hypothesis as a positive correlation. See, he's talking about the trends. And he's talking about the average of these guys. So you see, you can see numbers going on here. The standard deviation measure that was used to order the measure of the amount of variation within the data in respect to the mean within the data collected. There are no outliers. See, he's talking about the outliers in here. Get a little bit more details about the standard deviation. Now, after you've done that, again, comes the scientific article. You should not be anything related to students' labs. It's not somebody else's duty, okay? And it should not be just one sentence. I have students say, according to this guy, this doctor, he did an experiment just like mine. Done. Finished. <laughs> you can't do that. You really have to have like three to four sentences talking about that experiment done. Now, you come and say, well, I can't find any experiment that is closely related to my experiment. Then what do I do? This is the moment that you actually go and talk about the biology behind. You can go and say, according to whatever book or according to whatever situations, articles, cycles, whatever it is, explaining the biological mechanism that supports your hypothesis. That is totally fine as long as you're also citing it. But that's just an ex extreme situation where you cannot find any articles of any scientists backing up your hypothesis. That is totally okay. But it has to be a credible site, okay? Once you have done this, then most of the, the background of the whole conclusion is already good and set. So here's an example of showing this. According to a various studies in which the effects of this of plant was investigated, conclusion could be made that which correlate results of this investigation. For example, the study by blah, blah, blah. Then he tells him, he, start, he talks about his studies, everything. And you can see he mentions all this information. And from that, he was able to back it up his story. So it's very important. And remember, he did right here the citation. So he found an article or a scientist who has done an experiment very close related to his, and he mentioned that's what it is. This is what we talk about backing up a scientific article. Now, the positive limitations. This has to be there. What it means positive limitation? That means what are the things that went well in your lab? And that means it can be things like, oh, I was able to complete without any uh, safety issues. That's one. I was able to gather 25 datas. But here's the important thing. You have to mention at least one. Now, you don't have to do a huge paragraph. You're wasting your time. One or two sentences is enough to target this point, which is the positive limitations. So examples of things that you can actually say is like there was enough data collected. There were no safety issues. There were, the procedure had no complications. These are, these are like two or three sentences, okay? But again, do not use first person. Just say according to that person, according to the experiment, the, all the data were fully collected sufficiently. There was no safety issues in there. The procedures were very smoothly. Bam, that's two sentences in there. Done. You got the point for the limits. Now, on the next one, the next video, I'm going to talk about the limitations, which are the negative ones, as well as the improvements and the propositions. These ones are the ones which also students have a hard time when it comes to conclusions and evaluation. So stick by for the next video so I can talk about limitations and improvements. And remember, with an AIB, you can get that seven. See ya.